Hello and welcome to News Review from BBC Learning English. I'm Neil. Joining me is Catherine. Hi, Catherine. Hello, Neil. Hello, everybody. So the Euros 2020 football tournament kicked off this weekend and there were shocking scenes as Danish player Christian Eriksen collapsed on the field. If you would like to test yourself on any of the vocabulary you hear on this programme, there's a quiz on our website at bbclearningenglish.com. Now let's find out more about the story from this BBC News report. Ericsson collapsed suddenly towards the end of the first half of Denmark's match against Finland. While he was being treated by medics on the ground, his visibly shocked teammates formed a ring around him. And soon after, television in Denmark cut away to aerial shots of the stadium. Ericsson was given CPR on the pitch before being carried away on a stretcher. So Danish footballer Christian Eriksen collapsed on the football field just before half time. Many of his fellow players were in tears, absolutely shocked at what was happening. He was treated on the football pitch and then taken to hospital. He is recovering now um, and the Danish team doctor said he had actually suffered a cardiac arrest. That's a heart attack to you and me. So very serious situation. Yeah, he is fortunately recovering now. Um, and um, the game actually went on, didn't it, Catherine? Yes, it did. It was abandoned temporarily, so they stopped playing. But once all the players realised or were told that he was awake, they decided to continue the game, which was eventually won by Finland by one goal to nil. OK, well, you've been looking around the various headlines about this story and you've picked out three really interesting words and expressions. What have you got? Yes, today we are looking at stable, heartfelt and eye-opening. Stable, heartfelt and eye-opening. So let's start with your first headline with that word stable, please. Yes, we're at Sky, first of all. The headline, Christian Eriksen stable after collapsing during Euro 2020 game as doctor describes how medical team got him back. Stable, fixed, not likely to change. Yes, we have an adjective here. It's spelled S-T-A-B-L-E and it refers to physical things which are fixed in position and they don't move. So, for example, Neil, your camera um, is not wobbling at the moment, is it? You've got a very, very secure, still picture. Yes, I'm using a tripod to make sure that the pictures here are stable. If I didn't have it, it would wobble. I'm now wobbling my tripod. Right, that's very unstable. You've got an unstable picture there. Yes, I have, yeah. So um, stable is used um, to talk about physical things like this tripod, but we can also use it like many, like many items of vocabulary in a figurative way. Yes, absolutely. So stable here is referring to his physical condition, his his medical condition, saying that it's if something if you are stable medically, it means you are not changing, you're not getting worse, you're probably not getting better, but it means that your condition is not changing, so it's not as worrying as when your your condition is critical or deteriorating. It basically means very little change. Yeah, and we can use it to talk about sort of situations in general. For example, the economy can be described as stable. Yes, when there's not great periods of economic change where um, investments aren't changing too much, things aren't going up and down too much, we can say it's stable. You can talk about other things like you can be in a stable relationship. That means the kind of relationship where there isn't lots of drama, you're not arguing and breaking up and getting back together. You just have a strong, solid reliable relationship. Yeah, and you've already mentioned it, but the negative of stable is unstable. That's right, yes. So if you're in an unstable relationship, you're doing lots of breaking up and arguing. If the economy is unstable, it means there's lots of ups and downs with the economic situation. Now, like with uh, most words uh, in most languages, there are different versions of the word. We've been looking at the adjective. Uh, we've been looking at the adjective. Um, we can also turn this into a noun. Yes, stability. We can. Yep. Uh, so that would be stability. That's an S T A B I L I T Y, and the negative of that is, is instability. 
So starting yeah. with an in, the prefix in is the opposite of stability as a noun. So we've got unstable but instability. Yes, different prefix there from un to in. And it gets worse, I'm afraid. <laughs> I'm <laughs> because, afraid it does, yeah. Because the verb form of this word stable is stabilize. Yes. And, and the opposite of that is destabilize. Yep, so we've got all the different prefixes. We've got unstable, instability, and destabilize. And just to make it slightly more complicated, there are two ways to say to spell stabilize. If you're here in the UK, you spell it with an S. In the middle, if you're speaking American English, it's with a Z. Yeah. I would like to apologise on behalf of the English language for the, the complicated collection of prefixes connected to yeah. this word. Sorry, everyone. <laughs> Let's get a summary. If you are interested in stories about football, we have a really interesting one about the European Super League. That didn't go very well, did it, Catherine? No, it didn't last long at all, but you can find out what happened by clicking the link. OK, let's have a look at your next headline. Yes, in the UK with Hello and the headline Crown Princess Mary of Denmark releases heartfelt statement to footballer Christian Eriksen. Heartfelt. Sincere. Yes, we've got two words here, H-E-A-R-T, the second word felt, F-E-L-T, but we put them together without a space and we have one word, heartfelt. Now, the meaning of this word is kind of very much related to the two words that it's made of. Felt, if you feel something in your heart, we're talking about emotions. So um, thinking of the heart as a place where you feel love or happiness or grief, pain, all of those emotional things, heartfelt means it's very strongly felt. A strong emotion, a deep feeling. So we often use the word heartfelt as an adjective to describe a noun such as, in here, a statement. A heartfelt statement means a really deeply emotional statement. Or we can talk about heartfelt apologies when you say you're sorry and you really, really mean it. Yeah, you often hear a heartfelt speech at a wedding. You do, yes, yes. When the, when the groom's kind of saying how much he loves his wife and he's crying with emotion, yeah, you can say that's a heartfelt speech. Yeah, and just to say again, we're talking about heart in the poetic sense. We know this is a story about an illness and somebody's heart, the physical organ, the heart, but uh, I don't think there's a connection here in this headline. No, I think it's just a coincidence. Yeah. OK, let's get a summary. OK, how about this for Heartfelt? We have a story about a TV producer who proposed to his girlfriend live on TV at the Emmys. What do our viewers have to do, Catherine? Just click the link down there and you'll go straight to the show. OK, let's have a look at our next headline, please. Yep, next off we're at givemesport.com, the headline Euro 2020 Heart Doctor's Twitter thread on Christian Eriksen collapse is eye-opening. Eye-opening, revealing in a surprising way. Yes, another two-word expression. This time the two words are joined together with a hyphen, a little short line between both words. The first part is I, E-Y-E. -E. The second word, opening, O-P-E-N-I-N-G. If something is eye-opening, it surprises you because you learn something you didn't know before, often something that's quite unexpected or impressive even. Yeah, and it's just another example of how figurative the language is that we use. Um, you know, if, if you want to see something better, what do you do? You open your eyes yeah. really wide. Open your eyes wide. Yeah, really. 
Open it, yes. So that's not really what it means here, but it does have a kind of connection. It's the idea of making you surprised, making you kind of wonder, giving you some amazement, impressive. So if you watch a TV program, you know those nature documentaries, Neil, yeah. where you watch something about like a little spider that you never even think of, and then you discover this spider has this amazing world of all these wonderful things it can do, and it's lifetime, you know, the, the trials and difficulties it has and the way it overcomes them those documentaries can be really eye-opening because they teach you things you didn't know yeah absolutely sometimes you hear about someone who spent an evening in a accident an emergency ward in a hospital it's a, a real eye-opener for them yes nice noun phrase there yeah if something is an eye-opener it teaches you or surprises you with things you didn't know previously. And you're right, the word real often comes with eye-opener, a real eye-opener. OK, well, let's get a summary of that. Time now for a recap of our vocabulary, please, Catherine. Yes, we started with stable, which means fixed, not likely to change. Then we had heartfelt, meaning sincere, and we finished with eye-opening, revealing in a surprising way. Do not forget to test yourself on the vocabulary. There's a quiz on our website, bbclearningenglish.com, and we are all over social media. Just look for us. Thanks for joining us and see you next time. Goodbye. Bye.